The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.thebenjamindixonshow.com to register for our blog and join the Progressive Army. We're taking you to Dallas, Texas, where uh, Pete Buttigieg is endorsing Joe Biden. He just now uh, spoke. Let's listen in. While competing with him, he is somebody of such extraordinary grace and kindness and empathy. From taking time to talk to somebody who struggles to speak to taking time for a family that's struggling with loss, he will bring the exact kind of empathy that is so badly lacking in this White House and along the way in his campaign will draw us together as we need a leader to do. There are 14 Super Tuesday states, including my home state of Minnesota. So what I want all of you to do is vote for Joe. Vote for decency. Vote for dignity. Vote for a heart for our country. That is what he will bring to the White House. And with that, I give you the next President of the United States, Joe Biden. We need somebody who can beat Donald Trump. The man in the White House today poses an existential threat to this country, to our democracy, to free and fair elections. And we need somebody who can beat him. And in Joe Biden, we have that man. We have someone who, in fact, is the antithesis of Donald Trump. Joe Biden is decent. He's kind. He's caring. He's empathetic. And he's going to lose to Donald Trump. (laughs) Welcome to the Benjamin Dixon Show. I am your host, Benjamin Dixon. Uh, In order, you heard the endorsement of Joe Biden by Pete Buttigieg, Amy Klobuchar, and Beto, Beto, whatever, O'Rourke. Um, the conservative moderate branch of the Democratic Party is coalescing. They are uh, joining powers. They are merging into Captain Moderate, Captain Planet. Um, with these powers combined, they can get enough uh, votes to stop Bernie Sanders, but they will never get enough votes to stop Donald Trump. And the real question is, who honestly believes that Joe, Joe Biden is the best candidate versus those who know that he's not, but he's just enough for them to stop Bernie Sanders? There are some gullible people, um, high disinformation voters. I don't don't call them low information voters that suggest that they're stupid. No, they watch the news all day long. Every day they are just highly disinformed. They are the uh, recipients of propaganda. They have been the victims of 40 years of propaganda that has warped their thinking from being uh, a party for the working class to being a party that rejects any idea. Of doing something for the working class. They reject it. It's anathema to them. They completely reject the idea of doing and of raising taxes even slightly on the billionaires. That's because the billionaires run the Democratic Party as well. But before we get into that usual conversation, which is factual, but we have it on a regular basis. The fact of the matter is, is I believe that there are a lot of people who are celebrating today these endorsements of Joe Biden simply because it stops Bernie Sanders with the full knowledge that Joe Biden will lose to Donald Trump. He does not foster the motivation, the excitement, the organizing. He doesn't have the organizing capacity. He's never had the organizing capacity. He's not a speaker. He cannot speak without showing that he is in some type of uh, he's lost a step or two. And this is who they they are sacrificing those in power who are who their number one priority is to stop Bernie Sanders, period. Their number two priority has clearly been to stop Elizabeth Warren, which is why she isn't getting any support from um, from the center. She's not getting any support from the establishment um, because she has a wealth tax that's going to tax billionaires. And because billionaires control the Democratic Party, there's no way they would allow Elizabeth Warren but to, to become president. But Elizabeth Warren is going to allow herself to block to, to be the person that helps to block Bernie Sanders. And it's fascinating. We always looked at the Republicans as being uh, the totalitarian party, the ones that fall in line with whatever the party players say do. Um, but we've seen the exact opposite happen. And we saw this developing, quite frankly, in 2016. I gave a lot of commentary on this where the Democratic Party actually was the party that uh, could be whipped into line, whipped into shape, get in line. 
Uh, and it looks as though that's exactly what happened with this uh, with these endorsements, which which, by the way, I just want to say in, from the political horse race um, um, uh, vantage point that this was a brilliant move. I mean, this is this is a great move that will be written about politically speaking and political science, probably for generations. The irony of it is, is though as brilliant as it is, it is precisely the move that you need to lose to Donald Trump. And so it goes back to what I said at the beginning. Some people really believe that Joe Biden can beat Donald Trump. You have no evidence to suggest that what you believe is founded in reality because every indication, every indication shows that Joe Biden is exactly what you need to lose to Donald Trump. It gives Donald Trump the ability to call the Democratic nominee a racist because he has a racist past. Not as flagrant as uh, Michael Bloomberg, but that doesn't matter. Jo- uh, Donald Trump is going to run to town with that. You give Donald Trump the ability to show that Joe Biden is the ruling elite because the ruling elite of the Democratic Party shut out the working class hero, Bernie Sanders, or even hell, Elizabeth Warren. I'm lumping Elizabeth Warren in there, not by virtue of her, but by virtue of what she doesn't even realize she represents to the establishment. The establishment, the the establishment is just as repulsed by her as they are uh, Bernie Sanders. Elizabeth Warren just doesn't realize it or she does and doesn't care. Right. Uh, Who cares about her motivations? But the fact that she has a wealth tax that is going to tax billionaires to the tune of three percent is a non-starter. And so the the Democratic Party has closed down ranks. The moderate, the conservative side, the people who are intent on not doing anything for you. They are so committed to stopping us from doing anything for the working class that they are now uh, falling on their own sword and falling into line, uh, being whipped into shape by the party leaders. And that's going to be an advantage for Donald Trump. It, it simply is. Listen, can I tell you something? I want to tell every Bernie supporter something. Um, what you can do, honestly, in this situation is to is to go ahead and vote. It's Super Tuesday, right? Go vote. Go vote for Bernie Sanders. Do what you know, vote for whoever you're going to vote for. You're going to vote for Elizabeth Warren, whoever. Go vote for them. That's fine. If 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 Joe Biden gets the nomination fair and square, you can do whatever you want to do. I'm never going to tell you what to do, but I'm just going to tell you it will not matter if he gets 90 percent of Bernie supporters to show up at the polls in order to defeat Donald Trump. He is not going to win. It doesn't matter what percentage we get if we get a hundred percent of Bernie supporters to come out and vote for uh, Joe Biden, he still is not going to win because it was always going to take more than Bernie Sanders had to win. It was going to. T- I don't think people realize what we're up against in J- in November. The Make America Great movement again movement is unified. They are extremely motivated. They are out there canvassing. They are out there going door to door. They're out there spending money on 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 black news on the black news network. I mean, they're pouring money into uh, disinformation campaigns. I mean, there are billions of dollars that are just slushing around all for the purposes of securing Make America Great Again for 2020. They are more they are honestly more motivated than Bernie Sanders supporters. And this is why I always I, I, I've been recently trying to say, let's make sure that we do everything that we possibly can, because it's going to take all of that to beat Donald Trump. The turnout numbers for Donald Trump have been amazing. In the primaries, you know, they run primaries for Republican for incumbents, right? And he's getting turnout bigger than he got in 2016. They are motivated. Do not take that for granted. You are not going to be able to scare enough people and make them terrified of Donald Trump because we have gotten to know that devil over the last four years. He is the devil that we know. 
And he's entertaining to a whole lot of people and to a whole lot of other people. The cruelty is the point. This is their guy. This is their Messiah. The evangelical church is already comparing him to Jesus. I'm trying to tell you the level of commitment to Donald Trump is something that we have not seen. And it certainly rivals the support for Bernie Sanders. So even if you gave Joe Biden all of Bernie Sanders supporters, it's still not going to be enough if we do not get more people out to vote. That was going to be a challenge for Bernie Sanders, but at least Bernie Sanders has currently, because it's not over, it's far from over. We'll see what Super Tuesday looks, looks like. We'll see how effective all these endorsements are. They're probably going to be very effective. The polling, the most recent polling shows that uh, it's a toss up. It's very possible now with all these endorsements for Joe Biden to come out with the, the uh, preponderance of uh uh, of delegates today right but if you're listening to me and you haven't voted turn my crap off and go vote and go encourage somebody else to vote but the point is if joe biden gets the delegate count of course all of a sudden they're going to want to abide by the rules watch how this flips all of a sudden he's going to get like 49.9 percent of the total delegates and bernie sanders is going to get like 49.8 and they are going to say the plurality rules and they're going to give it to Joe Biden. Or we won't even get in that situation because all of the superdelegates will swarm over and, and balance it out. So there's a possibility that Bernie Sanders is going to lose this thing. And that's why I say, wow, this was a master. This was a political master stroke, but it is exactly what you need to lose to Donald Trump. Which comes back to which brings me back to the Bernie Sanders supporters and anyone else who's who's um, turned off by this. Number one, go and vote. Make sure you still do your part. Continue to canvas. Continue to phone bank. Continue. Don't let it slow you down. Don't let it discourage you. Continue fighting the fight. But if it is the case that this strategy, because we have two progressives, we have three quote unquote progressives, I guess, if you count Tulsi Gabbard still in the race. And we only have one moderate. Well, there's Bloomberg. We'll keep an eye out on Bloomberg. He hasn't dropped out yet. We'll see. I have a feeling, though. I have a feeling that he's going to drop out pretty soon. And they are putting everything they have into a man who is completely incapable of defeating Donald Trump. Listen to this uh, clip from yesterday. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by go. You know, the you know, the thing. <laughs> I'm sorry, but. That's who you're going to put up against. You you know the you oh the <sighs> brilliant move. Listen, game recognized game. Brilliant move. Kudos to the con, uh, conservatives in the Democratic Party. Absolutely, kudos to you for for figuring out what was necessary to help win. I mean, they're hiding it behind the narrative of black people spoke up. Uh, no, conservative black folks in South Carolina spoke up. Um, they are not representative of all of America. They certainly are not. Matter of fact, South Carolina, in the bigger scheme of things, when we get to the general election, Donald Trump is going to take South Carolina because some of those same conservative people are going to go and vote for Donald Trump. OK, um, and all this all this idea of we're going to get never Trumpers. Ooh, if y'all just give us never Trumpers are playing y'all so hard. <laughs> They're going to what is it about a hundred never Trumpers? Let's say there's 10,000 never Trumpers across the country. You're not going to win with them. Their coalition, they're not bringing enough to your coalition to win with them. But I do want to reiterate something that I said. You don't have to say that you'll never vote for Donald, uh, for Joe Biden. You don't have to do that. Matter of fact, you can vote for Joe Biden if you so choose. He's still not going to win. Because he's going to get in those debates with Donald Trump and Donald Trump is going to do to him what Negan did to Glenn on The Walking Dead. He is going to politically just crush him in front of the entire world to see because Donald Trump. Here's the difference. Like, I think people are always saying, oh, well, Donald Trump, he doesn't have all his mental faculties. Do you know how easy hate is? Do you know how easy it is to be bigoted? It's like a default position in humanity. If, if you don't remember how to do anything else. You know how to be evil. Donald Trump knows how to be evil. And so Donald Trump knows how to flip this on Joe Biden. Joe Biden is going to come out looking like the racist, ladies and gentlemen, and non-gender conforming individuals. Donald Trump is going to make the case that Joe Biden is the racist. Donald Trump is going to make the case that Joe Biden is the elites. That he's the representative of the elites. It doesn't matter that there's hypocrisy. 
No, what matters is, is that the person on the other side is just as much damaged goods as Donald Trump. And so Donald Trump has the ability to exploit that. And his supporters are going to be perfectly fine with it. Even if you play a video, even if you play a video side by side of showing Donald Trump being a bigger racist than Joe Biden. I'm trying to tell you that that uh, what's your boy name? Donald Trump has the superpower of being able to be a toxic person while calling someone else toxic and nobody's able to check him for it. Because he has a support group that will never hold him accountable. That is not an advantage that Democrats have. And so you can't put somebody in there who is purchased by the elites against another person who's purchased by the elites. When the other person, Donald Trump, is going to be able to say that Joe Biden is purchased by the elites and his audience is going to believe it. And that's going to be the end of it. And you know who else is going to believe it? Independence. You know who else is going to believe it? People who thought about voting this time around, but maybe I will. Oh, well, they're all the same. They're all the same. So long as, as Donald Trump is able to convince enough people that they're all the same, that depresses the vote. Joe Biden, it is it is impossible for Joe Biden to beat Donald Trump. But hey, go ahead, establishment and shoot your shot. Bernie Sanders supporters, y'all go ahead and vote in Super Tuesday. Do your thing and and may the best man win. Best old white man win. But what we're going to see is an establishment lose it all just so that they can stop Bernie Sanders. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon show. And here we go. Very special welcome and thank you to all of our newest patrons. Very special welcome to Alex Martinez. Welcome aboard Mark Perez, Joseph Freeman Jr., Carrie, Snitch Boy, Thomas Lockwood Jr., uh, um, Valen- <laughs> Valentin Vanderhorst. Uh, JW, thank you for becoming a patron. You, you, I mean, oh man, I love your names. Nikita Settles, Persaka, uh, Puskara, that's what it was. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard to Dad Bod. Uh, I feel attacked. <laughs> Very special welcome to Baker, Darren V. Richardson, E.G. Bam Yazi. Okay. Uh, welcome aboard. Thank you so much to Blake Patrick. Uh, very special welcome to Teresa J. Parker Roberts, Charles Moylan, Mark Smith, Steve Lenivy, Jay Hezekiah, Tracy Stevens, Jared Bailey, Carol Stefanoff, uh, Lion Lion, Andre Morton. Thank you all so much for becoming patrons. You too can join this prestigious and prodigious patron family by going to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. And becoming a patron You get twice the content With half or actually none Of the ads Like the one that you're going to get Right now I want to pick up right here Right where we left off and make a couple of more points uh, A little clearer Before I move on to this new uh, topic I want to make sure That everyone is clear That I would think and agree That Joe Biden is generally better than Donald Trump In terms of, well, he's not Donald Trump. And that's pretty much all that you could say about it. But in terms of what Joe Biden actually wants to get accomplished, two things. His history has showed us that the most important thing to him is capitulating to Republicans. If you ask him what matters the most, every single time you're going to hear him say working with Republicans, he can get it done, man. No malarkey. I reach across the aisles. I can get it done working with Republicans. And we have seen Over and over and over again, where Republicans will never work with Democrats, they will only allow Democrats to work with them. There is a significant difference. No matter what happens, if it is a policy that is proposed by Democrats, Republicans have shown 100 percent opposition. They are a unified front against Democrats. And then when they propose something, they expect full cooperation like tax breaks. So uh, President Joe Biden would be constantly capitulating to own the things that matter the most to us, to Republicans. So vote for who you want to. The fact of the matter is, is, is he better than Trump? Yeah, but he's going to do exactly what Trump and the rest of the Republicans won't done. And what are they going to call it? 
What are they going to call it when Joe Biden, who has a proven track record, Joe Biden's number one issue is to work with Republicans. And what will Republicans call it when he does? Actually, I don't I honestly don't think he knows what office he's running for. And it doesn't matter. You know, maybe he gets in because he's a little more moderate. So maybe he gets in. But he's not going to be running it. Other people are going to. They're going to put him into a home and other people are going to be running the country. And they're going to be super left radical crazies. They're going to be super left radical crazy. Joe's going to be in a home. He'll be watching television. Everything will be just fine. (laughs) I'm trying to tell you what the, the, the key point in there. There's multiple points, but one of the key points is no matter how much Joe capitulates to Republicans, no matter how much he gives in to their desire, he is going to be called a radical leftist socialist. This is the game, man. This this is the game that's been clear. It's a game as old as time. No matter when you're dealing with disingenuous actors, no matter what you do, they're going to interpret it in bad faith, no matter what. And so if your goal is to work with bad faith actors, they are going to constantly destroy you and pull you closer to them. That's that's just a a, that's almost like a law of nature. People will always try to take advantage and and engage in bad faith. Republicans right now in the place where we live at this time, Republicans will never engage in good faith with Democrats. And if you put a president in there whose sole purpose is to try to find a way to work with Republicans, then what do you think is going to be accomplished? Nothing but continuous capitulations to the Republican Party by Joe Biden. But that's if you're lucky and he actually wins. Joe Biden is not going to win. And here's the thing. I've I've been saying it in this episode and I'm going to say it again. It won't be because of me. It won't be because of Bernie Sanders supporters. Hell, I'm going to I'll throw on a Joe Biden T-shirt. I'll walk around and I'll say vote for Joe Biden. And guess what? It won't be enough. It will never be enough because Joe Biden, not only is he not exciting because all he wants to do is capitulate to Republicans and get some bipartisanship going where they could all just go out and get a nice scotch after the session is over. And then after they get their scotch, the Republicans go to their clandestine meeting of dark of their plan, their 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 long nefarious plan and plot that they've been plotting over the last 40 years. All while Joe Biden is at home recovering from his hangover. I mean, that's the game that's been played a consistent. There has been a consistent and methodical plan executed on the United States of America by conservatives over the last 40 years. All while Joe Biden was there trying his best to work with them. Gosh, gee, gosh, Willikers. Uh, I just, you know, gee, gosh, Sam, I just want to work with you, uh, 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 John. Uh, I just really let's just find a way to work together. If that means cutting Social Security, then so be it. I just really want to work with you. That is Joe Biden. And because we know that about Joe Biden, we also know that he is not going to motivate. He is. uh, okay. let me help you out like this. Do you think that Joe Biden is better than a a better candidate for president than Hillary Clinton was in 2016? Huh? No, seriously. Answer that. Do you think that Joe Biden is a better candidate for president than Hillary Clinton was in 2016? Now, add on to the fact that Donald Trump is the incumbent. Add on to the fact that we have been so inundated with relentless propaganda over the last 40 years, but particularly in the last four years of Donald Trump's presidency, three and a half years, we have become almost immune, not immune, but desensitized to what Donald Trump actually represents and what he actually is. In other words, the masses, they aren't scared of Donald Trump anymore because they have gotten used to living on the edge of the the chaos that he creates. Every day, everybody wakes up and goes to work and they're trying and they they have found a way to make this their new normal. So what am I saying? You have a candidate who doesn't inspire anyone to change or come out and do anything great because he's he's uninspiring. Joe Biden, coupled with the fact that people are familiar with Donald Trump, he has the advantage of being the incumbent and Add on top of that, that the MAGA Make America a Great Again movement is almost as motivated, if not more motivated, the Bernie Sanders supporters 
folks, you have given us the exact recipe necessary for Joe Biden to lose to Donald Trump and for Donald Trump to get another four years. And what I'm saying to Bernie Sanders supporters is we we, we don't we're not going to be held responsible for any of this. OK, fine. Everybody go vote. Let's see how the delegates fall out, you know, flesh out. If, if Joe Biden gets the nomination, fine. Yeah, OK, we'll support. I'll support him because guess what? He's going to lose. And you're not going to come to my show and say, well, Ben, if you just had pushed him a little bit harder, if you hadn't talked about him so bad, then then your supporters, your voters would have gone and, and voted for him. No. No, I'm letting it be known right now here today that there is a structural reason that Joe Biden is going to lose. He is a subpar candidate, not even as good as Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton is a far more qualified candidate for president, and yet she could not generate the enthusiasm necessary to defeat Donald Trump. And now, three and a half years in, America has become accustomed to the madness of Donald Trump. And so they are not as terrified as you think that they are. You're going to get 10,000 never Trumpers. Congratulations. You're going to have a whole new big tent to include never Trumpers. A whole 10,000 of them. While not expanding the tent enough to get people, the working people of this country to go out to the polls. So we don't have to do anything. There's no sandbagging that's necessary. It is already structurally. I, you could call me a prophet. You could call me whatever you want to call me. Mark this episode. If Joe Biden becomes the nominee, he will lose no matter how much we support him. And so I'm going to prove that point. I'm going to prove that point. If he gets this nomination, I'm going to support him. I'm not going to say good things about him because that's like physically impossible for me. But I just won't continuously tear him down because it's not going to be necessary because he's not going to motivate the people. He's not going to motivate the masses. He's incapable of doing that. He does not have the the wherewithal. He's lost a step. He does not have the mental capacity to actually do the job or to win. Add on top of that, the most motivated era for bigotry. Make America great again. They are motivated. They are organized and they have billions of dollars behind them. It is a recipe for Donald Trump to have a second term. But those in power, they know that. They just want to stop Bernie Sanders. Let me start with my headline tonight. I'm retiring. This is the last hardball on MSNBC. And obviously... This isn't for lack of interest in politics. As you can tell, I've loved every minute of my 20 years as host of Hardball. Every morning I read the papers and I'm gung-ho to get to work. Well, after a conversation with MSNBC, I decided tonight will be my last Hardball. So let me tell you why. The younger generations out there are ready to take the reins. We see them in politics, in the media, in fighting for their causes. They are improving the workplace. We're talking here about better standards than we grew up with fair standards. A lot of it has to do with how we talk to each other. Compliments on a woman's appearance that some men, including me, might have once incorrectly thought were okay. We're never okay. Not then and certainly not today. And for making such comments in the past, I'm sorry. Uh, That was Chris Matthews last night on the fly, uh, canceling his show without even telling the MSNBC team. Uh, It was so abrupt, in fact, that he didn't finish the entire hour and left it to Steve Kornacki to have to jump in and fill in the seat in the middle of the show. Listen to this. Um, That was a lot to take in just now, I'm sure. And I'm sure you're still um, absorbing that. And and I am, too. Um, Chris Matthews is a giant. He's a legend. Um, It's been an honor for me to work with him, uh, to sit in here on occasion. Uh, And I know how much you meant to him and i know how much he meant to you and i think you're going to miss him and i know i'm going to um we're not gonna have any bells or whistles here we do have to fill the rest of this hour and so that was that uh chris matthews uh resigning on the spot because of sexual harassment allegations that um were first reported uh or more recently brought back to light on twitter and um and that was that So um, 
that's yeah i i don't have any commentary on that um i've enjoyed chris matthews over the years uh that's i used to that's used to be all i watched for many many years uh during the obama administration and um well that started to change once i started doing my own content and started putting things into um perspective and and you know, having stuff to say myself versus just letting someone else say it to me. I would say, you know what? No, I'm going to go into great detail about that process, why it's important for us to be speaking to ourselves versus letting other people speak to us and and write what's in our mind. Like, like I'll give you a glimpse of it. Earlier in the episode, I said that people who get their information from mainstream media, they're not low information voters. You'll insult them if you call them that. The fact of the matter is that they're high disinformation voters. And when you when all you have in your head is the framing that someone else created for you, you are susceptible to being a high information voter, a high disinformation voter. Um, And Chris Matthews, just like anybody else on mainstream TV, mainstream television, mainstream media is controlled. It is absolutely controlled. The narrative, the window is controlled um, by corporate interest. It simply is. It is a statement of fact. It's not a statement of conspiracy. It's not a statement of frustration. It is a statement of fact. Anything. I mean, you could see it on YouTube. If you want to see how pervasive corporations are in terms of deciding what we can and cannot talk about, look at the fact that there are so many videos on YouTube that are demonetized because they are not conducive to what, what is it that they say? They always send you a warning. It's not suitable. For most advertisers. Now, if you think that's happening, no, it's not a thought. It is happening on YouTube. What do you think is happening on mainstream media? Which means that all of the high information voters, all the people who think they have high information because they watch CNN, MSNBC and Fox News. In fact, they are high disinformation voters because everything in their head has been framed, meticulously framed by corporations. Yep. All right. So actually, that's it. I see um, I'm already over time for the regular show. The patron show will start momentarily. But I just want to echo a couple sentiments that I've said in this show. Um, Everyone is going to do. First of all, it's Super Tuesday. Go vote. Right. If you're in one of the states that is voting today, get off your butt. And I know I'm preaching to the choir because the people listening to me are probably are. They probably already voted. Okay. Uh, But I just want to make sure that we dovetail the conversation with that. Despite the moves and the machinations of the Democratic establishment, the most powerful thing that we still have is how we use our vote and whether we use our vote at all. That's number one. Go vote. Number two, um, Joe Biden. He does not need us to oppose him to lose. He is structurally the very best candidate to lose. I think Amy Klobuchar had a better chance of winning the the actual general election. And, and, And the reason is, is because. One, Amy actually could go toe to toe with with Joe uh, with Donald Trump in the debate. I'm I'm sorry, Joe Biden is quite literally the best candidate you can pick to make sure that you lose, and he doesn't need our assistance. He doesn't need our opposition. You're not going to blame me for it. You're going to look back to this episode. You're going to be mad when you lose. When November comes and you all have nominated Joe Biden, fine. You're going to be mad and try to find a way to blame a third party candidate. There's nobody talking about a third party candidate right now. I don't even know if Jill Stein is on the on the map right now. What did they get? One percent. If if and this is this is the this is why he's the structural candidate to lose. Because Democrats cannot afford to lose even the smallest percentage of their voting base. They need everyone to show up and to overperform. They need African-Americans to show up and overperform. And you think you could trust the conservative voters? Look at the turnout. Look at black American turnout in 2016. Look at the overall turnout, the decline in turnout for Hillary Clinton. And you mean to tell me you think that Joe Biden is more inspiring than Hillary Clinton? Or are you saying two people, two things that are being said to us? That I've already gone over, but I just have to just, I got to finesse the point a little bit more. 
some of you honestly think that everyone has this existential dread of uh, of Donald Trump. <clears throat> you believe that if we put anybody except Bernie up against Donald Trump, that we could beat Donald Trump because everybody is terrified of him. No, you are terrified of him because you have done nothing but consumed mainstream media news for the last four years. And you haven't really paid attention to the fact that nothing has been able to stick to Donald Trump. Do you know why? That's because Donald Trump has a support base that worships him and that nothing that he is going to do is going to make them betray him. They believe in him so much so that they will give up their money. They'll give up their wealth. They'll give up their own security, their own safety. Hell, some of them are going to give up their lives because they're going to die because they don't have access to health care. But that's OK. They're willing to make that sacrifice rather than live on the teat of the government and socialism. Right. So there are people who have made a clear decision that they are more willing to die. Literally, this is not hyperbole. About 68,000 people a year are going to die because of a lack of health care coverage. How many of them do you think are Republicans? How many of them do you think have already made the calculation? Whatever. They don't deserve whatever. They don't think they deserve health care. Or if they want health care, they don't want it from a socialist government. Remember that old lady who said, keep your government hands off my Medicare. That's the level of disinformation that we're dealing with. But guess what? You are dealing with it, too. You who are the consumer of mass media, of mainstream media, because you think that everyone is just so terrified of Donald Trump that they're automatically going to go out and vote for Joe Biden. And you're negating the fact that people need to be motivated and inspired by something that is going to be done for them. How is Joe Biden going to change our lives? And there's not a single supporter of Joe Biden who can uh, elucidate how Joe Biden is going to improve their lives other than getting rid of Trump. And so if everyone in this country has become accustomed to the to the shenanigans of Donald Trump. And all you are offering is that Donald Trump is going to be removed from office. Nothing more Then you are not dissuading his sycophants, those who are going to stand by him no matter what. And you're not motivating the people who need something done in their lives. It is a structural loss. And there's nothing that you can do to help him win because Joe Biden is literally the very best candidate to lose to Donald Trump. Don't say I didn't tell you. And with that, we'll go over to the patron show and talk a little bit more about this philosophical side of this. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show and support the Benjamin Dixon show. If you like this episode, be sure to share, like, and subscribe.